Now let's just talk about animation. Before animation comes rigging and as I listed all these stages, rigging can be merged with animation but it is quite a work on its own. So we are gonna talk about rigging as well but it will be a really really brief introduction kind of thing. In this video I'm showing you quickly how Blender deals with every different aspect of 3D computer graphic animation or how every stage is completed in Blender. What is the approach of Blender to deal with all the different stages or to work on all the different stages of 3D computer graphics to complete the final project. So for rigging, let's just create something really quick. And the most quick and easiest thing as in terms of an example comes in my mind is a door. The door is really simple and the easiest thing that I can do right here and explain you what is rigging. So let's just do that. Now I'm gonna press shift and then press A to bring up the add menu and I'm gonna go into the mesh and create a plane. Now let's press R for rotate and then press Y for the Y axis and then type in 90. Press enter. Press G for grab. Z for Z axis and press 1 for the value. To move this plane up in Z axis by the unit of 1. I'm gonna go here into the set region and I'm gonna set the origin to the 3D cursor. This way it will be easy for me to manipulate this plane to create a door. I'm gonna scale it a bit up and then I'm gonna scale it up in Z axis. Scale it up a bit more. Now I'm gonna go into the edit mode and since all the vertices are selected, I'm gonna type I on the keyboard. And I'm gonna drag a bit inward. I'm gonna press shift so it gradually moves uh, or gradually scale down. Or gradually slide whatever you want to say well if it moves really fast you can press shift to slide it gradually now I'm gonna go and deselect everything by pressing A and then I'm gonna press and hold control and then press tab and I'm gonna choose face mode for the selection Then I'm gonna select this face and now I'm gonna press X to delete the face. I'm gonna go into that edge uh, mode, select this edge. Now I'm gonna go and activate the snap button. I'm gonna choose increments from the options and absolute grid alignment. Bring it all the way down. It will automatically snap it to the grid. Deselect it and I'm gonna go and activate the face mode and select this face. And then I'm gonna type P on the keyboard. And it will give us options for separating part of our model or part of our mesh. So we're gonna select separate selection this will separate the selected face from this mesh and then i'm gonna press tab to go out of the edit mode and i'm gonna select it back again so the rest will be deselected gonna gonna press tab again and then press a on the keyboard to select all of the components and then I'm gonna press S no um, I'm gonna deselect it sorry and I am going to select edge from here select this edge right here and this edge right here and press S and press Y to scale it in the Y axis 
okay deactivate the snap during transform button now I'm gonna press S again and press Y to scale it in the Y axis and scale it slightly upward now all I have to do is press A to select all of the components and then I'm gonna press E to extrude it out or inward like that I'm gonna do same with the uh, this door right here I'm gonna scale it a bit inward just a bit and just a little more in Z axis so that I can lift it up a bit as well okay hmm interesting let me see okay now I'm gonna select it or sorry select it was already selected I'm gonna press tab and press A to select all of the components and then I'm gonna press E to extrude it out as well just a little bit to create this door right here I'm gonna move it inward a bit more and then I'm gonna press tab to go out of the edit mode now we have created a sort of a door and as you can see this door kind of rotate in the middle we can change this uh, this behavior by moving the pivot right on this or this either of these edges but I think the better way to do so is to rig this and since this example is for rigging so we are gonna basically rig this door otherwise this uh, such a small thing uh, is not rigged or I don't think anyone would like to rig such a small thing or such a small system which just need one um, control or one attribute to be controlled this can be done manually as well it will give you the exact same result rigging is for the purpose that you are working effortlessly in your project or you have control over objects or your characters or whatever you want to animate you have control over that and you're gonna animate it effortlessly so this is not a really good example for rigging since there's no extra functionality we are getting out of this small example neither do it is making it easy for us to animate it in any way but just for the demonstration purpose now what I'm gonna do is gonna show you how to rig this in blender whatever we want to rig we use bones to rig any object or machine vehicles or characters anything we have to rig we use bones other software might not use the same approach to deal with rigging but in blender almost everything that requires rigging use bone system so in order to do that let's just create a bone system in blender which is called the armature so we are gonna go into the add menu all the way down here it is called armature gonna go in that and gonna choose single bone it will create a octahedral shaped object and this is our bone system it's not just a single bone it's a system of bone in blender it is called an armature now thing is that 
every bond you create for a rig you create in this system or in one armature for that rig or for that character vehicle car whatever you are creating the rig for you have to create a system for it and that system will create contain all the bonds in it and that system is called the armature now to create bonds in this system we have to go into its edit mode just like our 3d mesh objects we have to go into its edit mode so press tab to go into its edit mode and first i think let's just go out of this edit mode and let's just define the position where we want to locate the pivot of our controlling bone or main bone to do that let's just go and select this door and press tab press c to go into the wireframe mode and select the outermost edge then press and hold shift and then press s unselect cursor to select it this way it will locate our cursor right in the middle of this edge it is where we want to locate the pivot of the main controlling bone hit tab to go out of the edit mode press a on the keyboard to deselect everything and hit tab to go out of the edit mode select the armature and hit tab to go into its edit mode and now select the entire bone then press and hold shift and press s and select selection to cursor this way it will place our bone exactly where our 3d cursor is it's like the beginning of this bone which is right here in the bottom this is the beginning where this octahedral shape is beginning and where it's like this is where it ends and this is where it begins select this uh, sphere spherical thing whatsoever select this shape and then using the move tool to drag it all the way back it doesn't matter exactly where you drag it place it anywhere back in the y-axis now select the end of this bone and press an old shift and press s and then select selection to cursor this way it will this way it will locate the end of this bone exactly where our 3d cursor is and this is exactly what we want we want to create our controlling bone out of this so this need to be exactly where our 3d cursor is or exactly where we want our pivot to be now to create a bone all we have to do is press e and as you remember e is for extrude as well for the mesh so remember e for the extrude press e and it, it will and it will extrude another bone out of it drag it out and you will see that this bone is being dragged in all axes so what we need to do is we need to press y to lock it down to the y axis and dra drag it out quite a bit as much as you want to you don't need to drag it all the way out till where the door ends this can be enough so now we uh, will press c to go into the solid mode let's just stay in the edit mode for a while and let's go into the uh, this tab right here it's the armature tab and this is the bone tab let's go into it and deselect deform what it will do is it 
the moment you bind your object to this armature it won't uh, distribute its weight into this bone so if i don't check this box what it is gonna do let's just press a to deselect everything and press tab to go out of this mode now what we, it will gonna do is when I'm gonna bind this door with this armature, it's gonna distribute its weight of deformation to both of these bones. This way, both of these bones will be able to influence this door. We don't want that. Uh, we just want this bone to close and open the door. That's it. So, to do that, we will select the door first and then we will select the armature. And then we are going to press and hold control and then press P. This will bring a parent menu for the armature. And we're going to select this, this option bone relative. What is going to do is it's going to automatically, what it's going to do is automatically distribute the weight to the respective bones. I'm going to select it. I'm then going to select this bone and press and hold control and then press tab. Is gonna go into the pause mode as you can see right here. We can select this and you will see that this bone is actually controlling the door now. So if we press R on the keyboard and then hit Z for the Z axis, you will see this door can be closed and open by using this bone. Now one thing you will notice right away is if you select this bone and rotate it will be doing the same thing as well. First the pivot is changed and second I said that this bone won't have an influence on this. And yes it doesn't. This door is moving when we are moving or rotating the bone is because this bone right here is controlling the movement of the bone so this bone is parented to this bone and it's it's uh, this bone is child of this parent and this root bone have an influence on this bone so as a result this bone is having an influence on the door we could do one thing uh, though we could have never created this bone in the first place but anyway, I've just created just for demonstration purpose. So we're going to go out of the pose mode into the object mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a controller. So instead of uh, looking, uh, having to look at these bones and selecting them to control the door, we're going to create a controller which is in, res in return gonna control these bones in order to do that we're gonna use component of meshes to do so so uh, to create or use component let's just press and hold shift and then hit or press a on the keyboard and go into the mesh and create circle we are gonna go and type 0 in all of these and press N back again. Now what we are gonna do is, I am, what I'm gonna do is I am going to go into the edit mode and uh, go into the uh, vertex. Well, first of all, this circle is basically edges or well first of all this circle is made up of many vertices connected by many edges making up into a circle we're gonna go into the edit mode by pressing tab on the keyboard since all of these vertices and all of the edges are selected we're gonna press shift to duplicate it and then press s to scale them out scale them out a bit and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna activate this snap while transform to 
and from the snap menu or snap option I'm gonna select increments and I'm gonna activate this absolute grid alignment back again and then I'm gonna press S again this way it will perfectly align with the increments now why we need that I will show you in a minute first just press 7 in the numpad to go in the top view and then press 5 to go into the orthographic view and then press Z to go into the wireframe mode now from here what we are going to do is we are going to uh, press B key on the keyboard this will bring the marquee selection click and drag it and select half of all the vertices and press X and then select delete vertices the very first option hit the left mouse button and it will delete all the half vertices of this circle we're also gonna delete uh, the other half vertices from what is left again press P and then select half of those vertices keep in mind we want to leave the very center uh, these two vertices in the in the very center because it will delete them as well so press X and select delete vertices now why I want to align with the grid I think it haven't aligned with the grid whereas it should have done that I'm gonna do that manually okay hmm, interesting Okay, the reason why it's not doing that is because so we go into the edit mode. Yeah. The reason why it's not doing that because it's very much aligned to this uh, axis and right here in this axis so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manually hmm, I'm gonna manually align to that and align to this and then I'm gonna change the rest of them accordingly yeah it is fine now why I wanted to do that I wanted to do that because now I'm going to make a arrow shape out of this to do that all I have to do is select one of these vertices and then press E on the keyboard and it will automatically extrude it out and snap it to this grid then press E again and then extrude it outward like that. Select this one, press E to extrude it out and snap it to that. And E again and snap it here. Now we are gonna um, we're gonna select both of these vertices and I'm gonna press Ctrl V and I'm gonna select remove double. This way it will merge both of these vertices. We could also do the same thing by pressing and holding Alt on the keyboard and then pressing M and it will going to bring us merge option. And we could have selected any one of these options. Let's just say merge at the center. Let me show you other op options too. 
it said at the first, at the last, at the center, at the cursor, or collapse. Basically, not at cursor or collapse. These first three options, right? Because they were exactly at the same location. Now we're gonna deselect all of these and I'm gonna extrude these vertex out and I am going to merge both of them by first selecting this and then selecting this one and press and hold alt on the keyboard and then press M it will give us option to merge and we will select merge at the last it will close our shape and we have some sort of a shape right here now why we need to create this let me show you why if we select this bone and we press and hold control and then press tab we go into the display mode and I think we can go to the display. No, okay, no, we can't. So press to tab to go out of the edit mode and then press control tab again. We can go into the display mode and choose a custom shape for this bone. As you can see, we have created a shape of our choice or what we think is necessary for the uh, to represent the shape of the controller or which shape will best represent the shape of the controller so as for our project we've already created this curved arrow and so we are gonna go into this display custom shape and uh, click it and it will give you options for all the objects that are available in the scene and for this example let's just select the name of the object that we want the bone to mimic the shape of in our case is circle let's just select the circle and we will realize that we don't see the bone anymore now if you press z the bone is right there with the shape made but if we go out of the wireframe mode we will see the bone is disappear again so to fix that and what is happening is the wireframe is turned off since this these are just edges not an actual polygon which is a visible component of a mesh but let's just say press shift and z you will see this object is not visible anymore in the render view because this object doesn't have any visible component so this is the very reason why this bone is not visible in order to make it visible we have to select the wireframe and we also notice one thing that the well we can increase the scale of uh, the bone and this is good but as you can see first if you don't want this uh, then you can see the location of this bone or this controller is not where we want it to be in order to do that all we have to do is select this uh, object or this shape we have created for this bone and then press uh, tab select all of these and then press G and press Y to move it around first I think I'm gonna do is 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 what I'm gonna do is yeah I'm gonna place it I'm gonna uh, press and hold shift and then press S and say selection to cursor and then activate this snap key as you can see it's a very useful tool 
So bring it all the way. Hmm, interesting. All the way down. Gonna press that and I am going to bring it outward. Deselect it and bring it outward. Press 5. You can leave it uh, where it is because I think it's fine where it is or you can just select it and bring it all the way out till it reaches the edge. To change its color we can to change the color all we have to do is select this and go into this armature tab right here and open up the bone groups tab and bring it down a bit add a group and when you're already I'm already selecting this bone or if, if no bone is selected then select this bone or the bone you want to assign to a group and s click assign now you can select from these options if you like. Let's just say select these or select the yellow option for it. We can change some colors like we can really, hmm, let me see, we can change colors. Set custom color. You can really change the color if we like to do so by going here and selecting really, really bright. Well, you get an idea. So, uh, to complete this rig, all we have to do is first hide this into a different layer. Well, in armature, bones have layers too. You can hide bones by putting them in a different layer as well. In the armature tab, under the skeleton panel, you will see layers for bones. So, I'm gonna select the root bone and I'm gonna put it in a different layer this way we are just represented with the main controller well my purpose you can say for creating a root bone is just to show you if you have to create a root bone or different bone that you're not gonna use as a controller bone and that you don't want to display it but they have function in the rig but they don't control the rig. They uh, serve as some sort of function that is needed in the rig, but uh, you are not going to control the rig by those bones. You can hide those bones using this method and show the bones that are needed. Now I'm going to press N to go into the property region of the 3D viewport and i am gonna lock all the other axes that that i don't need for this bone i've selected this bone and i have locked all the attributes under the transform panel in the property region of the viewport by pressing these buttons right here so now you can see if we select this by first deselecting and select this and if you press G for grab, it just opens and closes the door. Or it just rotates the door. If you press R, it does the same. We cannot scale it or we cannot move it. It only rotates in one axis. If you want to, you can limit it as well. You limit the rotation as well. If you go into the bone constraint and limit the rotation if you want but this is for another tutorial 
it's just to demonstrate if we how to create a rig um, system for your animation moving back now moving on to animation let's just first bring the cursor back to the center uh, for the animation let's just create bouncing ball animation for this video we're gonna create UV sphere we're gonna uh, apply smooth shading for it in the operator region and we're gonna press G and then we are gonna press Z for Z axis and type 1 for the value and then tap enter it will put our sphere right on the grid now what I'm gonna do for the ease of this animation is I'm gonna assign the or I'm gonna set the origin to the 3d cursor right at the end or at the bottom of the sphere this way it will help me create the animation really easily so what I'm going to do is at the very first frame of our timeline I am going to lock the z-axis insert a single keyframe lock the I think or key sorry key the z-axis and key I think I want to key all the axis in the scale and I'm gonna activate the auto keyframing from the header region of the timeline editor and I'm going to um, activate this automatic key insertion using active key set only I'm going to activate this button as well and I'm gonna choose available from here by the way I move this header by the middle mouse button you cannot do it with the right or left mouse button only with the middle mouse button middle mouse button and click and drag it now let's just being on the first frame of the timeline bring this uh, sphere all the way up or how about just uh, press G for grab Z for Z axis and press or enter 10 as value Maybe 10 is too high. Tab backspace to remove those values. Whatever value you're gonna add are gonna show up right here. If you keep your eyes here, you can see if I press G again and press Z for Z axis, and whatever value I'm gonna type in, it's gonna show in to that region, into the header region of the 3D viewport. It is too much. Seven is, I think, seven is enough. I'm gonna move um, in ten frame into the timeline. Okay. Why just? Sorry, I'm gonna select available from drop down menu right here. Then I'm gonna press G again and Z for Z axis and type 7 for the value and press enter. It will only lock the available axis. Now I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move 10 frames into the timeline and I am going to type 0 for the location and scale it down in Z axis. and press s and then press and hold shift and press z to exclude the z axis it and scale it out a bit now this will create a squash effect for the sphere it will just act like it, the ball is squashing out 
So we are going to go for this value. As you can see, the value that we have subtracted from here, we're going to add all those values right here. Just to give this squash effect. We're gonna okay. We're gonna modify this animation, but first, I think the volume is not preserved. Let me do the maths right here, really quick. Or, I think I know how to do the maths right here. It's five for the value and. 25 here and 25 here for the realistic values now I think this is perfect now going to the 20th frame and resetting all the values where they were initially and selecting 20 as the end range you will see a smooth animation. Choose this to hide the move tool or the transform tool. No, the animation is not that perfect. In order to have more realistic animation, what we need to do is split this area into two and choose graph editor in now we are going to go into the z-axis hide all the other axes z-axis and i am going to go and by the way i'm changing the size of of the graph editor main region by pressing and hold control and middle mouse button um, drag it side by side and it will change the horizontal uh, length of this or it will zoom in zoom out horizontally and drag it uh, up and down it will change the length or it will zoom in zoom out vertically now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this press V and set it to free now I'm gonna uh, select one of, let me pause it for a while and click it right here. As you can see this horizontal line was bothering me so I, I just place it right here. Play it back and now I'm gonna select one of these handles. Press R to rotate and rotate it all the way up until it aligns with the curve do same to this curve as well and you can see it's more like a bouncing ball as compared to before I'm also going to go ahead and pause it for a while uh, I'm gonna uh, press I'm going to select individual from here and I am then going to select both of these um, points or both of these keys and I am going to press S for scale and I'm going to scale it out. What's going to do is going to keep the ball up in the air for a longer period of time. What it's going to do is keep the ball in the air for the longer period of time for more dynamic animation. You see that? And if you don't like this, if, if you don't like this, if you don't like this, you can always adjust it. I think I'm happy with the result.
now we're gonna hide this and show all of these curves all of these keys and curves and i am going to select the bounding box back again i'm gonna select the bounding box i don't know what this 2d cursor means if we select all of these yeah okay this 2d cursor means if you pause this and place this cursor wherever we want to and select all of them by pressing a and then press scale or rotate it it's gonna do it around this point which is not what we want so we're, we're gonna go back and select bounding box center play the animation back again and i'm just gonna uh, select these two keys of all the uh, all the axes for scale and i'm gonna do by pressing uh, b for marquee selection and selecting all of these keys you can also do it by pressing c it will select all of them and then press s for scale and scale in scale them inward and press x for x axis only now them now what we are going to do is scale them inwards a bit I think that was good. Mm, interesting. Well, for now, this animation is good for the demonstration purpose. How animation is done in Blender. Very beginning of this, we're going to go in a lot more detail in the upcoming or a tutorial or we're gonna go into more detail in upcoming chapters but for now showing you how animation is done in blender this is how it is done and for that the animation is quite interesting so after that our 